The UK is returning back to peacekeeping operations for the first time in quite a while. Um, so we've been here, the UK, in Minusma for the last uh, 12 months. Uh, and this is the second rotation, the second time we've deployed a 250 strong force out to being part of Minusma. So the speciality of the Long Range Reconnaissance Group is, as the name might suggest, the ability to go long distances, to stay deployed for a long time, and to provide reconnaissance for the Force Commander and the Special Representative for the Secretary General. But it's not just reconnaissance, it's also to act as well. And so as a force, we move long distances from our base in Gao, we stay on the ground for long periods of time, and not only find and understand the situation, but also act to protect civilians as well. The Long Range Recce Group is the British contribution to the UN mission in Mali. It, uh, it is formed of uh, various different elements, uh, but primarily it is uh, vehicle platforms that allow us to go uh, further into areas uh, where previously there hasn't been much uh, host nation uh, security forces. So there's a, there's a couple of elements here for the Long Range Recce Group. It's the distance, uh, but also the duration that we're able to go out. And these are uh, unique selling points that allow us to help the people of Mali by understanding their security issues and then feeding that back into the UN so that we may better able to uh, tailor a security solution for them. Le contingent anglais a sécurisé euh, la zone pour rassurer et protéger. Et après euh, quelques jours, euh, on a eu l'équipe euh, Trois de l'Homme euh, qui sont venus faire euh, leur investigation euh, au terrain. Alors nous, on a pu, pu se faire de la sécurité pour eux euh, pour essayer de gérer euh, leur sécurité pendant qu'ils faisaient leur investigation. Because we had had uh, so much time on the ground with uh, uh, subject matter experts such as the humanitarian uh, investigators and the UN poll, uh, we're able to apply that knowledge in various different ways. And one of them is bringing further experts down here. Now, it is certainly in the wake of the events right now of the 8th uh, of August attacks. And a number of families have left the area. Up to 200 families have left. Uh, and what we're trying to understand is uh, the state of people coming back. So those internally displaced people uh, returning to their, their residence and trying to understand what conditions they need to have come back and thereby better again tailoring our response as MINUSMA uh, and the UN to, to support them in that return to, to normalcy. In this moment, it's very important to have the water. C'est très important d'avoir, euh, comme on dit, la shelter, c'est comme euh, les maisons. Et c'est important d'avoir la nourriture parce qu'en ce moment, il y a beaucoup de déplacés dans la région. Euh, après l'attaque la, le, le 8 août, euh, il y a beaucoup de déplacés. Et on cherche pour euh, les projets d'améliorer la situation pour les déplacés, mais aussi pour le retour des de, 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 déplacés à, à les points d'origine. Le rôle de l'LRG est de get into the spaces where there no, there's no one else and whilst we're there provide some security. So in that area between Ansongo where FAMA have their base and down in Labazanga, the same where there are gendarmes and, and Malian armed forces, we can move the villages at the greatest range between those two bases and provide some security for weeks at a time. <laughs> So this is one of the capabilities, I think, that we would say is part of what's needed by a modern peacekeeping force. The idea that a UN peacekeeping mission was standing on a wall between two armed groups, I think, is in the past. And a modern peacekeeping mission needs things like drones, it needs reconnaissance. Uh, these are not very high-tech capabilities, but for us, they allow us to see beyond the horizon, seeing what's happening 20 or 30 kilometres away, importantly protecting civilians over a wider range. So whilst these capabilities were once high-tech, 
they're now something that can really be used at quite a low level. And each of my companies, which are about 100 people, have one drone each that they can use to cover large distances. So it's a really critical capability for us. We are responsible uh, to ourselves, but also uh, where we are to provide security for those civilians. And therefore it's incumbent upon us to understand the security situation on the ground uh, and then be able to react if the situation demands it. I think it's really good because obviously we get all it, get experience in operational tours and we also come out to the, help the UN, help this country and see a different scope of the world that we wouldn't see normally in the UK. We've had multiple reports, especially from them themselves, saying that they feel safer when we're here because when we're here, the bandits and the insurgency groups will not come because we've got the UN flag, we're safe, we're giving them protection. I think there's, I think there's something about British Army soldiers, that they want to be doing their job, they want to be on the ground, they want to patrol. After we've been out on patrol for three or four weeks, we'll come back into camp and within two weeks we've fixed the vehicles ready to go out again. But within a week the soldiers want to go back out on the ground. For them, they've come to Mali for six months, so they don't want to spend that six months sat in a camp. They want to spend it out here um, in the Malian countryside meeting the people. And, and you're right, they are young but they are out here for an amazing experience to, to help Malian people, many of whom are young as well. It was a child, childhood dream that I had, that I wanted, always wanted to join the uh, infantry particularly. Um, all of my, my friends back home said that, um, you can't join infantry because it's all men. And I said to them, watch me, it's now open to women, so I'm gonna join and I'm gonna complete the uh, training and here I am, I've done it, completed it and I'm out in Mali now on operation. I see myself as a soldier, I'm here as to do a job whether it's male or female so that's that's all I see it as, I'm male or female. Not every day is the same, it's different every day so you'll find one job one day, the next day have similar symptoms but it's a totally different fault. It's absolutely critical for us to have women involved in peacekeeping as well. Um, and it does several things for uh, does several things for us. Firstly, it means we can speak with men and women equally whilst we're out on patrol. Um, we have no specific female teams in our force. What we have is women throughout the force. And that means everywhere we go, we can talk to men, we can talk to women, we can talk to children. And what we found is that having uh, infantry soldiers that are women is great for breaking down barriers for understanding the problems that you just don't get in a country like this where there's been a problem with fighting and violence um, and therefore men can sometimes seem intimidating. MINUSMA has elements uh, from uh, across the world uh, and there are many troop contributing nations and I think uh, the overwhelming feel is, is pride to be part of that. We are here to protect civilians and we're here for peacekeeping.